Good morning, good morning, good morning! Now as you can tell from the title of this video, it's basically about the cost and the differences with owning a Ducati. Now, before I start, a bit of a disclaimer, there will be some haters out there, some purists who will say, you don't actually own a Ducati. Because even though it says it on the side of the tank, this bike wasn't built in Bologna. It was actually built in Thailand, as uh, the vast majority of the monsters are built now. And future iterations of the brand will be, in the, I'm sure. But what you've got to remember is that if you buy a Triumph, it's built in Thailand. If you buy an Alpine Stars jacket that has got history back to the Alps, that was actually probably made in a sweatshop in Bangladesh. And I know that because I've got one that is made in Bangladesh. The thing with budgets these days is the budget is more important to businesses than borders. But anyway, owning a Ducati. So let's get the basics out of the way, the boring stuff. Insurance is actually no more expensive owning a Ducati than any other bike. When I changed my 2002 Yamaha TDM 900 to a 2015 Ducati Monster 821, the insurance didn't change at all. It was the same price. Tires, the same. Any make of tyre, any brand of tyre that you can buy for uh, a Yamaha or a Kawasaki or whatever will be the same price as it is on a Ducati. Servicing is an interesting one because if you... I'm not sure why you stop there because they actually have to stop for us. If you have your servicing done at main dealer, you will find that if you go to a Ducati dealership, you will pay a premium. However, if you've got a good quality independent motorcycle repair centre that you're happy to use, use them. The actual repairs for Ducatis don't cost any extra for basic servicing. The basic servicing parts don't cost any extra. So there's little reason why you should spend a fortune when you don't need to unless the price of the stamp in the book is as valuable to you as the quality of the service. Parts aren't too bad except the difference with the sort of mass-produced Japanese bikes is that you can get a lot of non-genuine parts much easier and much cheaper than you can with Ducatis, Triumphs, BMWs the European brands. So again, not a huge issue really, uh, it's just the availability and the price maybe slightly changes. So that's basically the cost of owning a Ducati. And it isn't vastly different if you're not fussy about, you know, making sure you've got the Ducati stamp in the book. So the next big thing about owning a Ducati is this belief an impression that reliability is a problem. Now I'm not going to ride here and tell you that that isn't the case and wasn't the case many years ago. But since 2002 Ducati was taken over by Audi. They changed the way the factory worked, the production line worked. They got um, products and items on the bikes manufactured at different factories around Europe and around the world. So it wasn't all done within the Ducati Brands Centre in Bologna and the improvements in the reliability were overnight. Since 2002 Ducati is actually one of the most reliable motorbike manufacturers in the world. You may be surprised to know. Now the extras that are Ducati specials first one we're going to talk about is belts. Yes, your belts have to be done. However, it's every four years. 
you know most modern cars if they haven't gone back to chains still use a belt and yes they might be six years or 60,000 miles or 100,000 miles but most modern cars these days don't rev to 11, 12, 13,000 rpm and if my bike is going to rev to that speed then I would like to know that my belt is going to be able to cope with it and the other thing about Ducatis is the desmodromic valve system now that doesn't actually have to be adjusted as often as it used to it's now every 18,000 miles and to be fair if you put desmodronic into Google Translate it comes up as bollocks just sell it anyway so those are the costs of a Ducati what about the benefits well the benefits are more about a feeling and a stature than anything else. If you own a Ducati, you're part of a, a club, the Ducatisti. And that club has its fairly emotional and quite well represented owners groups around the country, which you probably find have a little bit more interest in the bike rather than just the ride and that's where the difference is you're part of a family you're part of a relationship where people are there to help out give information give advice and generally as from what I've found has been very helpful and very friendly advice which not all forum forums are I mean, look, there's all the jokes that are out there, and motorcyclists are the worst for snobbery, even though it might be light-hearted. You know, your Italian bikes make fun of your Japanese bikes, your Japanese bikes make fun of reliability of British bikes. Everybody hates American bikes, and American bike owners don't even recognise that other bikes exist. But it's all light-hearted, it's all good fun, and we're all part of the same community. But owning a Ducati for me has been an experience that I've thoroughly enjoyed. I've had this bike now for 18 months. It hasn't let me down, and I hate saying things like that because then you find out something goes wrong. But it hasn't let me down, it's been brilliant. And the quality of it, paintwork, design, build, and reliability impress me every single time I take it out. If you've got a bike in the garage that when you put it away and you lock it up you have to have a little turn around and a look at it and it goes through your mind how much you love that bike that's the right bike for you and this is the right bike for me. Take care guys, stay safe and I'll catch you on the flip side.